Thank you, Reda. Thank you for the kind invitation. I'd like to thank the course directors for having you here at this wonderful summit this year as well. So the topic I've been assigned today is to review peri-device leak, the assessment implications, uh, and the management. So why do leaks occur? There are really numerous reasons, but most importantly, we're utilizing circular devices for typically a non-circular orifice in over 90% of cases. And this results, to, results in incomplete coverage of these orifices or lobes. And other reasons include device undersizing, malapposition of the device, such as where the lobe is off axis, even incomplete endothelialization. And in the cases of layered devices, uh, the central leak, uh, so-called gunny sack effect. And even late leaks can occur from migration of devices or the suture knot, and as well, remodeling of the atrial appendage after closure. So several reasons as to why leaks can occur. Now, theoretically, these incomplete closure results in an open pouch with residual flow into the appendage. And this can result in turbulent flow adjacent to the device and enhances plated adhesion and thrombus formation um, on the device and within the atrial appendage. And this connection to this pouch uh, can then lead to embolization of these, of these thrombus past uh, the device into the systemic circulation. So what is the incidence of residual leaks? This really depends on the device um, that we utilize. So for instance, with the Watchman device, we've seen that from the PROTECT AS study, period device leak occurs between 30 to 40% of cases depending on the timing of uh, follow-up uh, imaging. And the majority of these leaks are between one to five millimeters. In fact, in the evolution study, 99% of the follow-up TEEs had leaks that were less than five millimeters, which is reassuring. In, in terms of the MPLETS or cardiac plug, um, looking at all TEEs that were done or the adjudicated TEEs, we've seen roughly about a 12% incidence of peri-device leaks, and the majority of these were less than 3%. In terms of the second generation device, amulet versus ACP, we've also seen that the amulet appears to be superior with absent leaks in over 90% of cases and with the ACP in about half of those cases. In terms of lariat, the incidence appears to be quite low from a period procedural period time point, but at follow-up, uh, it can range up to 15 to 20%. Now, of course, all these studies actually have different um, definition of what a period device leaks mean. So how do we assess residual leaks? Typically, follow-up imaging for device surveillance is done with either TEEs or CTs at one to six months follow-up. And assessment of residual LA patency is done on these uh, imaging. Obviously, TEE is the gold standard. Utilizing color flow Doppler, setting the Nyquist limit at less than 50 uh, will assess these leaks very well. Uh, we've, and others have also shown that CT imaging is actually pretty good to assess for a peri-device leak and in fact, more sensitive. Um, with various devices that we utilize, we've seen peri-device leak in about 60% of cases where there is residual contrast or pacification within the appendage after closure. And CT is also useful to look at the mechanisms of these leaks. For instance, we've seen with the single lobe devices with Watchman, typically the leaks are due to the osteo gaps. Very rarely we can have fabric uh, leak where there's incomplete endothelialization. Importantly for the MPLETS or device as well, having a mallet position of the lobe or off-axis lobe can also result in leakage of the contrast um, from the side of the from side of the occluder into the appendage as well. So it's important to achieve good apposition uh, with these devices. So what is the implication of residual leaks? Uh, we've learned from the PROTECT study, this is a very well-quoted post hoc analysis from PROTECT AF which shows that there is no interaction between residual flow and clinical outcomes. And indeed, the presence of any flow, irrespective of being on anticoagulation post or not, did not increase the risk of thromboembolic events. Similarly, for the ACP device, we just published this uh, very recently. Many thanks to the collaborators um, listed here, many of you in this room, um, where we looked at um, adjudicated TEEs that were done in the a multi-center study for the ACP. And of those 340 or so adjudicated TEs, the incidence of peri-device leak was 12.5%. And you can see the majority, again, were less than three millimeters. And when we correlated these presence of leak 
to any clinical events, we did not see any correlation to higher clinical, uh, clinical events. So this is as well reassuring. So then how do we manage these leaks? Um, importantly, uh, there's a lot of controversies here because there is no convincing evidence, first of all, that any of these peer device leak is harmful. Uh, there might have been anecdotal cases that leaks may be associated with device associated thrombus or thromboembolic events, we heard from Jens earlier, um, but is this just a coincidental occurrence because leaks are so common to begin with? And certainly there's no data that shows treatment of these peri device leak would improve outcomes. So, and compounding the issue, there is really no universally agreed definition of what constitutes a relevant size of a leak. And uh, so when should we then consider continuing anticoagulation or placing a second LA closure device? Well, from the Watchman studies, uh, from all the prospective series of Watchman, Protect, Prevail, et cetera, they set a threshold of five millimeters. But other authors, especially with other devices like MPLETS, or some have advocated a lower threshold like three millimeters. And other authors have advocated you know, the presence of any large uncovered lobes um, or even leak with any thromboembolic events probably should have this uh, be dealt with. So I scoured the literature, there's really not a lot of data out there. If we think about the over 30,000 of these devices being implanted uh, globally, uh, there are only in aggregate 23 cases that have been reported where a second device have been implanted. So these are the conglomerate uh, data. Uh, this first study I'll go over is from Bernie Myers' group, and you've seen out of the 223 cases of, of uh, MLA closure that they reported, uh, five, which is about 2.2%, required a second procedure, and they've utilized uh, the MPLATS cardiac plug or MPLATS or vascular plugs or septal occluders uh, to deal with these uh, second procedures. In a series from Frankfurt, um, out of 630 cases, about 12, or again 2%, required a second closure device. And their threshold for closing was leaks that were greater than three millimeters, and of these, about two-thirds were due to multi-lobe LAA. And the first device that they used were listed here on the left panel. You can see Plato, Watchman's, Lariat's, ACP, various devices. And the leak, leak sizes really range uh, from 3 millimeters to over 21. Uh, in some cases, they have intended to go in with a second device to begin with. And the types of closure devices they use, were, a lot of them for the small leaks were the vascular plugs. In the other cases, the larger leaks were ACP and amulet devices. So these are the various um, vascular plugs that are available um, that you can utilize for this purpose. Um, the AVP4 is nice because it's small caliber, uh, but it covers uh, uh, leaks that are four to eight millimeters only. Um, the larger sizes with the AVP2 can range up to 22 millimeters. And the AVP3 is actually really nice because it's oblong shape. So for eccentric types of period device leak is useful for that purpose. Um, the ADO, the MPLATS or ductal occluder, has also been used in several examples. Again, these are good for small holes, so between three to six millimeter in diameter, and they can be implanted through a five French catheter. So there are uh, three case examples, very nicely. These are courtesy of Nina, and um, these are some of the early examples um, back in 2007, where they only had one particular sh uh, device size, a Play-Doh. You can see they implanted a Play-Doh in the upper lobe, and the inferior lobe was uncovered. And so they went back in a couple of years later when they had the ACP available and implanted a uh, larger 26 millimeter uh, device in place. And uh, you can see the final results here look really good. They had complete closure with the second device in place. And uh, here's another example in 2010, um, which is an interesting case. They implanted a watchman and, was, and they couldn't actually retrieve the watchman because it was stuck in the upper lobe and they couldn't retrieve it, so they left it in place. And a few months later, uh, they went back in, um, allowing the uh, watchman to endothelize and stabilize in position first be before they attempted a second device. And with this second device, it was a 16 millimeter ACP. And you can see um, uh, very briefly, they were doing a tuck test as well. And, um, and they again obtained Pretty reasonable results. On the TEE, however, in this case, uh, they did see a peri device small leak uh, that was less than five millimeters, so they left that, uh, and the patient did well. And another example here is uh, courtesy of Dr. Price, um, and this is following a lariat uh, implant. 
and not infrequently, as I've shown the data early, 15 to 20 percent would have these central gunny sac leak following that. And these small little holes are quite amenable to placing these ductal occluders um, or AVP4. So these, uh, this is a simple example uh, utilizing a 5 French guide catheter to place this ductal occluder, which completely seal uh, the device. So in summary, period device leak is quite common with all transcatheter endovascular devices, and the incidence varies according to the device you looked at. Um, the clinical significance at this point appears to have no correlation to thromboembolic events, and uh, it's somewhat controversial, but perhaps large leaks that's greater than five uncovered proximal lobes, uh, we might want to consider continuing oral anticoagulation long-term or even utilizing a second device, and you have various choices of second device available for this purpose. Thank you. Mm -hmm.